They want him to shoot it. And he does. Ben Simmons shoots the three. The fans want it. They're asking him for it. And Ben Simmons is giving it to him. Joel Embiid comes onto the court and gives him a big hug. That has got to feel good. To quote the great Bill Raftery, onions. <laughs> ben Simmons is a bucket. He made his first three-pointer. So, guys, did the 76ers fans cheer a little too hard for Ben Simmons' first ever three-point make in the NBA? What is the music we're playing right now? <laughs> this is it right here. <laughs> the moment has arrived. No, hey, anytime you can hit a three-pointer with the shot clock running down against a non-NBA team in the preseason, you got to celebrate it. Right? Boo this man. you got to celebrate it. Boo this man right here. Welcome into the jump. I'm George Sedano holding it down here in the L.A. studios. We'll send it down to Rachel Nichols in Shanghai in just a moment. I'm joined today by our front office insider, boo this man, Amin El Hassan and NBA champ Matt Barnes, uh, who has a new show coming out soon on Showtime uh, called All the Smoke with uh, our boy, another jump staple, Stephen Jackson. So make sure you check that out coming up wait. soon. But coming up here on this show, the Celtics-Lakers rivalry may be heating up again in a different way as the Celtics may be looking to take the Mamba mentality out of Jason Tatum. But first, the rift between the NBA and China continues. For the latest, here's our Rachel Nichols in Shanghai. Thanks, George. I'm here in Shanghai with our Lakers insider, Dave McMenamin, 2016 NBA champion, the jump's own. Richard Jefferson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and guys, it has been a weird day here in China. Days. Started off with the Lakers NBA Cares community event that was supposed to benefit the Special Olympics. The government canceled that. The, can the government also canceled a fan appreciation event that both teams were supposed to take part in. Both teams also had to have their practices moved because the arena that they were supposed to practice in, they were resurfacing some of the floors because they had to take sponsor names of sponsors that had pulled out off of the floor. Um, there were also signs up around Shanghai promoting this event that have started to disappear. In fact, there was a 25-story banner that was right across from the Player Hotel with LeBron James' face and Anthony Davis's face and Kyrie Irving's face. And then today, there was a construction worker on a cherry picker peeling the banner off of the building. As you can imagine, that left players themselves with a lot of questions over whether this event was going to go forward at all. They got a chance to meet with Adam Silver when he arrived here in Shanghai today, asked him that question. Adam Silver, sources tell me, told them the NBA's intent was for this game to go on. It's a little bit up to the Chinese government, though, whether it actually happens. I'm also told that there was some frustration in the room, players not feeling like they were in position to talk about this whole situation with the media. They didn't feel they had the political background to answer questions. And so a planned media availability today was suspended. However, at the Global Games in Tokyo, we did hear from James Harden on all of this. You may remember that Harden came out earlier in the week in support of the Chinese fans. Today, he also came out in support of his general manager, Daryl Morey, and Adam Silver backing Daryl Morey. Take a listen. We all have freedom of speech. Uh, that's the world we live in. You know, everybody should, uh, how they feel and, and, and their thought process, be able to speak it. You know, obviously some people are going to feel some type of way, some people are going to agree. That's just the world we live in. Um, so, you know, um, you know I'm, I'm here for Adam Silver. So that's what James had to say, but we haven't heard from LeBron, Dave. We haven't heard from Kyrie. We haven't heard from Anthony Davis. What is the Lakers organization position on all of this right now? I wish I could tell you, because it's not <laughs> just the players who are reticent to talk right now. It's the entire Laker franchise. And when you deal with a team and you cover them on a daily basis, you build a relationship with their media relations team, and those are the people you go to for answers. When we have reached out to those individuals on the ground here in Shanghai, the answer is, that's a question for the NBA to answer. And the NBA was trying to schedule a media availability today with the players from both the Nets and the Lakers. We arrived at the team hotel ready to ask questions, ready to figure out how this situation is impacting everybody involved. And the NBA came and they told us that we are postponing media availability. Hours have passed. It hasn't <laughs> it been canceled hasn't yet. It's still postponed. <laughs> it's dark out. I just yeah, want to put, point that out to everyone. And so yeah. we're wondering, and there was literally hundreds so of journalists. So we're visual there, right, in the lobby? Absolutely. Uh, out of nowhere come about a half a dozen workers holding velvet ropes, and they carton off 
the lobby and split the journalists that were there waiting for the postponement, trying to talk to somebody, and really, you know, separated them in a way that was a little uncomfortable. It was like being in a pen to some degree. <laughs> Dave, you got to take a hint. When they bring the velvet ropes uh, to uh, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not one of the not preferred <laughs> people on the property. <laughs> on the Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we don't know how he got yeah, into this set yeah. either. Richard, you've been talking to some of the players as they've been around. What have they expressed to you? Well, the, there's a lot of confusion, uh, like Dave said. And I, I think for the players, you know, they look so they, they look forward to coming to China. They look forward to the opportunities. For the last ten to fifteen years, it's all about been been about brand building. And and players have come here. You know, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, James Harden, Russell Webb. They come here for you know multiple times every single summer uh, to help grow the global game. And a lot of it has to do with the impact that the game has had on all of our lives, mm -hmm. right? How it's been a allowed us to you know change our opportunities, help our families, and so to spread that opportunity. That's something that I think is important to the players. So to come here and then see how everything is slowly crumbling, I think it's been you know, somewhat devastating and a little bit of a shock. And what about you, if you were a player in this situation, how would you be dealing with it? Especially at some point, these guys, whether it's, even if it's not here in China, at some point, they're gonna have to face cameras and questions about this. Well, I, look, the average age of an NBA player is, is 26 years old. And, and even for myself at 26, I was not very informed. And I mean, let's I, be honest. How old I'm, are you still, now? I, I'm 39 <laughs> and I'm still not that informed. But I, I, I think it's okay to not know things. And I think that's something that I, I, I believe that a lot of the NBA, NBA players believe is I don't know that much about this situation. I'm not that informed. And it's okay to not speak on things that you're not that informed of. Um, and, and I think that's where a lot of the players kind of lie. They had no idea when they got on the plane from Brooklyn and from LA what was going on, the magnitude of the situation. Part of the reason why they didn't know the magnitude is because they're not that informed of the situation. And, you know, Steve Kerr got a little bit of criticism uh, for not coming out and speaking. And it's, you know, I, I think that's a bit unfair. Steve Kerr is very vocal about the things that go on in our country, in, in his community, things that he's passionate about that have affected his life directly. So to go to him and say, well, where, what is your opinion on this issue? And for him to say, look, I'm not that familiar. And then for people to kind of criticize him right. not being if you, familiar. If, if you speak out on one thing, you have to speak out on, on everything. everything. And, and, you know, look, a smart man knows what he knows, and he also knows what he doesn't know. Uh, I've spent a lot of our free time the last couple of days, you know, <laughs> reading up, reading up and learning about, uh, you know, the, the how delicate this situation really is. And I understand why people, you know, could be a little apprehensive about speaking on it, especially if you're not educated about it. And it puts the players and coaches here in a difficult situation on both sides, the Nets and the Lakers side, because we've seen the numbers, the teams that go overseas during the preseason, play these global games, it does have an effect on their season, especially earlier in the season. And most teams will tell you, you know what, it's worth it. It's this great experience. We just saw what happened in India. It, it was really a transformative experience, a lot of the players said, to be in that in a country that was some, still somewhat new to the NBA, play in front of crowds. There was one game where they played where it was all kids in the stands, and, and they said it was one of the most special games they've ever played. So even if there is some carryover and exhaustion earlier in the season, those guys feel like that was a really worthwhile trip. It's hard, I think, for players to feel like that here when they're not playing. In fact, they've had problems just practicing and keeping in shape, and this is a week of their training camp. Dave, what kind of effect do you think this might have down the road on the Lakers and the Nets? I mean, it's been tough for the Lakers already. They left L.A. with the story being one thing that they thought it was, 13-hour flight over here, no Wi-Fi. Right. And then they get off the plane and they're like trying to get caught up to where things are. I mean, Everything's I had moving so Wi -Fi quickly. Wi-Fi on my flight. They really got to get a better I did plane. As well, <laughs> not quite frankly. Now, I, I, so that's one thing where you're trying to stay on top of the information. But then the other side is like, the Lakers have nine new players. They need every day a training camp to try to get off to a hot start so they can avoid all the questions that could occur if they don't take advantage of their early season schedule that seems to be favorable. Because guess what? If they don't then the Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd questions come up. So all these things are interconnected and they are put in a situation by the league to try to work it out somehow uh, amongst themselves while the league doesn't have answers yet. And the Nets have new players too. Well, yeah, and, and I think at, right now, I think it's the teams aren't really, especially the two teams here, aren't really worried in my opinion about you know, our training camp. I think guys are going to work. Guys are in great shape. They've mm -hmm. already played a couple of preseason games. I think right now they're really, 
you know, they're really kind of curious how the situation is going to play out. You know, we've been here for a couple of days yeah. more than they have, and we have, we're not sure how the situation is going to play out. So I think that uncertainty, uh, I, I think, is kind of at the forefront. Are we going to play the game? What is going on? Like, you know, a day off of practice, if they play the game tomorrow and, and, and Saturday, I think, hey, everything's fine. But all of a sudden, if those games get canceled, but I think just kind of living in that uncertainty right now of what's going on. Can we go around China? Are, are we able to, uh, you know, because this is not the same experience, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. that most of these players are used to when they do come over here. So I think that's kind of at the forefront of their mind versus like, hey, our training camp and getting used to each other. That's, a, that's, that's one of those things that you'll see that effect in a couple of mm -hmm. weeks if they don't have it. But I think right now, everyone's kind of focused on this situation. And it is different for them here because usually they can go out to restaurants, they can do whatever they would do when they're visiting a cool international city. This is one of the great cities of the world. Yeah. And they don't feel like they can do that because they're going to get hit with questions. They don't know what the fan interaction is going to be. And look, I've been here in China with LeBron James before on a Nike trip and the fan experience was so crazy. People were just literally lining up in the streets to see him. Uh, this time we expected that kind of fan reaction for the Lakers and the Nets and sort of these, these brands of these teams. We've had only a couple dozen fans show up to see the buses go back and forth. That's pretty unusual. And it was interesting when the Lakers team bus rolled up. There were some fans that came out to see them. NBA entertainment cameras went over to get some footage of the fans, right? Nice moment. Mm -hmm. And you saw some of the fans lift their fingers up to their faces. They didn't want to be on record as supporting the NBA right now. That tells you something, and it's left the NBA kind of in limbo, too, because we don't know if the game is going to happen. The players don't know if the game is going to happen. The NBA doesn't know if the game is going to happen because it's really going to be up to the Chinese government, and it's going to be interesting to see over the next 24 hours what happens. We will be here, though, to help we'll let you guys know as things develop.